All right. Well, everybody, thanks for joining us. We got some people trickling in here, but we're going to go ahead and get started on time. I want to introduce uh, Tony Jefferson to everybody here. Uh, Tony, you've uh, uh, responded to my uh, plea for help. I said, let's get some uh, um, uh, some speakers in. And I actually posted on a uh, international speaker uh, group on Facebook had a great response for some, some really great people, and Tony's one of them. And then I like to speak to the speakers ahead of time, so we plan a Zoom call. When did we speak? Sometime late last week, Tony. Is that it? I think it was about Wednesday last week. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so about a week ago. And um, and you know, I'm expecting you know Tony, and you'll which you'll find out more here in just a second. I'll tell you about the business that he created, which is traveling to because um, that's his lifestyle. It's where he likes to. So I'm thinking he's over in Zimbabwe or some you know really exotic or something. And then he goes, well, Casey, where do you live? And I said, well, I live in South Georgia, about 15 minutes. I could be in uh in, in Florida. He goes, you live in Valdosta? <laughs> I said, what? He said, I lived there for four years. <laughs> Uh, when you were at uh, Moody Air Force Base, right? When you were in the military, sure. and I thought, oh my gosh, that's crazy. <laughs> so, so Tony, won't you do, let's do things a little bit like, um, won't you tell us where you're at now, what you're doing now, and then we'll back up and kind of talk about how you, how you got there. Do you mind? Would that be all right? Oh, that works. Yeah. Uh, so let me introduce myself, Tony Jefferson. Um, I am the owner and founder of TravelingSession.com. I'm living down here in uh, Fort Walton Beach, Florida, up in the Panhandle. Prettiest beaches in the world. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> so TravelingSession.com is uh, it's different from your traditional travel website. Most travel websites, they want to tell you about the destination. We want to put the focus on the traveler. Uh, I'll give you a scenario to help explain the concept. Let's say you want to buy a shirt. So you go online and you find a shirt you like. First thing you do is read the reviews, right? Let's say that shirt has nothing but five-star reviews. Should be a good shirt. But what if everybody that gave that shirt five stars is someone tall that wears a shirt tucked in, but you're short and you want to wear a shirt untucked? Those reviews do you no good. And that's pretty much the same way we approach uh, talking about travel. It's all about the destination, not about the person going to that destination. So we wanted to make a platform that put the focus on the person visiting the destination. The easiest way to think about it is like a social media website focused on travel, but there's a whole lot more to it than that. Uh, but since this isn't about going on and on about my business, and this is more <laughs> about helping you guys, uh, I'll do it at that. Okay. <laughs> well, that's super cool. But I, but I do think that we all, I'm sure you can work in a way of uh, describing more about your fascinating business, because I mean, who doesn't want to travel? Actually, that's a... There are people that don't want to travel. I'm not one of them. I have, uh, I really want to, you, Trudy does not want to travel. <laughs> she's already in California. She's got mountains. She's got beaches. <laughs> she doesn't care. I want to travel. You Thanks, well, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are intimidated by travel. And that's one of the things I wanted to, uh, I wanted to encourage people to travel. And I figured it's a lot easier to go off a recommendation if you know someone travels the same way that you want to travel. Like if I'm giving you a recommendation and I stay out all night partying and you're in bed by eight, my travel recommendations aren't going to do you any good. So you want to find someone who travels the same way that you do. And that's the way our platform is set up. So you can get reviews based on what's important to you. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Okay. So the way we're going to handle this is, is that uh, I've, I've got some uh, questions for Tony just to kind of keep the conversation going. I'd love for it to be a lot more organic and anybody who wants to um, raise your hand, put a question in the chat, turn off your mic and that, or turn on your mic and um, ask a question, just kind of leap in there. Tony um, uh, expressed earlier, he'd like a more kind of organic conversational, you know, presentation anyway, so you won't be offending anybody. So I'll just start it off by 
saying, um, so Tony, can you share like, you know, your journey? So how did you get here? Now you've achieved your passion where you get to travel all the time and, and you being get paid to do it. Okay. But where were you and how'd you get here? So I grew up in South Carolina, born and raised. And then, uh, after high school, I went to the military. Uh, my first duty station was like you said, Moody Air Force Base right there in Valdosta. That's <laughs> another reason why I was excited to jump on this. <laughs> but uh, eventually I got to go to uh, Japan. And once I got overseas and I got experience to the different cultures and seeing different things, I was just hooked. So I stayed in Japan eight years. Then I went to Germany for three years came back to the States for two, then I went to Korea. So I spent most of my career overseas and I finally retired here in Florida and it was stayed put here most part uh, because my girls are still in college. Uh, but that passion for travel, I knew I wanted to, in the Air Force I did IT. So I knew I wanted to combine that IT background with uh, my love for travel. So that's what gave me the idea to that plant the seed for the concept. But, Sir? Yes. Can anyone hear me? We can hear you, Jacob. Go ahead. I knew hey, when he said hey. IT that you would be interested in something. Yeah, I was going to ask what you did. I'm a, I'm an <laughs> IT supervisor currently, so I was wondering what specifically you did. Uh, mostly I did uh, cybersecurity. Okay. IA, cybersecurity, uh, a lot of compliance and um governance uh thing about the air force is most times you go to one base you learn a job really well and then they send you to another base and now you got to learn a whole new job so i had a lot of a lot of different experiences from uh air force wide uh inspections to running uh base wide programs but I have done it, but I've done, I've done some of everything from networking to uh, server support, uh, a lot of scripting, uh, some of everything, which helped my IT background. Looks like you've done some programming unless the C++ books are just for show. Oh, those are strictly for show. <laughs> so, I see you have an HTML book too. So, uh, well. So, so that was something I was, uh, that's something I was going to figure I'd get into later. That was, uh, <laughs> well, if you need help, I think Trudy has read all those books. So, so <laughs> Strauss Strip is the best. So I, I will tell, so I did, C isn't bad. I did, um, I did a lot of scripting. I did some web development when I was in, but not a whole lot, more like scripting stuff. So I thought the web development part would be easy when I started my company. And no, no, I suck at coding. <laughs> I suck. <laughs> so what did you, what do you use for your website? That's oh, interesting. I hired a developer. Oh, really? Oh, that's that, interesting. That, that's one of the things I learned early on in business find out what you suck at and then pay somebody else to do it mm -hmm. it's just not it's not worth all the frustration and time that you'd have to put into it yes exactly it's running a business is tough it every day it will try to make you quit don't add frustration where you know you can't, where you're not going to be effective. If you know you suck at something, just go ahead and mitigate that and transfer that to somebody else, delegate to someone else. But at the same time, it was important that I tried it first. So I know exactly what I wanted when I hired a developer to take on the project. Well, so you have like, to take those lumps. Yeah. So speaking of lumps, so where, tell us about the point that you decided to take the leap 
into starting your own business? So after I got out of the military, I uh, took another cybersecurity job, uh, worked that for like a year. And it was cool. I was working uh, this program and they were way, way, way behind. They, and within a year, I got them pretty close to back on schedule. And then they fired me because I didn't have my degree. <laughs> okay. So I'd already been working on this for a couple of years as like a side project. I said, well, I've got this free time. I'm just going to work on this for the next year, six months to a year. That's great. Then the pandemic hit. <laughs> you started your travel business before <laughs> then the pandemic. Yeah. Nobody knew. Nobody could travel. Nobody knew when we could travel again. No one knew if we were ever going to travel again. And so I'm sitting there at this dilemma. And it's basically, do you really want this? And I just had to take that step out on faith and here we are today that's excellent you know I, I think there's so many of us that are thrown into entrepreneurship and then business ownership um which we'll talk about the distinction between those two here in a little bit you know uh seven years ago the upper management of where i was working and uh, both the two top dogs were replaced you know but they they're both in their 70s and so they retired and then were replaced six months later i got fired from um from that job and found myself going i had two side hustles um a lot of people know my story i do a weird art form uh, amy and i do <laughs> called fluid art and we started teaching that um and i was teaching classes on the side and then i had a little private practice with my counseling services and um both of them uh, as soon as i was fired i was able to because they were already going right and i had them as side hustles uh just ramped up rather quickly and replace my income immediately our income did not even take a dip that's an unusual story with um starting a business but it definitely can happen so i'm with you tony sometimes we gotta be thrown right into the fire <laughs> that's good so you know I tony i told you oh yeah can, do it, tr do it can i ask if tony if your income took a dip and how did you handle that and did i mean did it work out for you oh, like hey, yeah that was a huge dip i was wasn't my favorite job, but uh, it paid well. So that was a huge hit. So I had to figure out how to work, manage within my military retirement and disability, which pays all the bills, everything, but it got to cut out a whole lot of frills. It was, it was a whole lot of sacrifice to be, to be made. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Is, is your business doing well enough now that you're back to where you were as an IT person? No. And maybe you don't, uh, well, I'm not where... be, you know, I mean, that's fine. If you don't want it to be, that's great. I'm looking bigger than that. I'm more concerned with, I've got a longer term vision than just trying to match that income. Oh, interesting. I, I want to hear more about that. Uh, I want to be. The website is, you've never heard of this concept before. It's a new concept. So I, a lot of it's, trying to find a way to market something to people that they don't know they need that's where the tricky part is now but i would really like this to be something i think this can be something big that's great it sounds like you like it more than it well and I, now there's still a strong IT uh, component to this. And there's still an IT company. It's still a tech company at the end of the day. I just found a way to fit IT into what I love. I found a way to find, to mix what I'm good at with what I love. Mm, that's beautiful. 
And that's a, that's a sweet spot right there. Yeah. Is when you can, you know, we've all heard it, you know, if you find, find, do something that you love, you'll never work another day in your life. You know, I mean, there's some, there's definite truths in there. There's some things that are harsh realities about that too, which I think Tony has already kind of alluded to is that no matter, I, I mean, I love being a counselor. I mean, I love it. I mean, I love every aspect of it, but then there's the paperwork. <laughs> And then there's the, you know, there's, the, there's always the, you know, the doubt, you know, about 20% of it is just like, ah, you know, you don't really get away from that entirely with entrepreneurship, you have control over it, you have more control over it when you own the business as opposed to working for somebody else. And so, like, one of the first thing I did was, um, in my private practice was I automated almost 100% of my paperwork. It's now on Google Forms that automatically get sent out. And, you know, I, I don't, it pops into the, you know, chart by himself. I do very, 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 well, probably like 2% of the kind of clerical or document documenting stuff that I used to do when I worked for somewhere else. So, but there's still that, you know, there's still the, the you don't get to escape <laughs> all of it, you know, uh, entirely. So that's great. Um, Tony, do you have something about you that you has always been there that kind of uh, helped you to kind of get shunted into the entrepreneur realm? Are there people, are, are there some people that are, can be entrepreneurs and there's some people that just can't? What do you, what's your theory, theories on that? What do you think? I think anybody can. I would too. But the key difference, the people that can and the people that, the people that do and the people that don't, the people that do, they want to learn all the time. Mm -hmm. And to run a business, you have to be willing to learn all the time. Doesn't matter whether you're interested in it or not. You have there's going to be things that you have to learn. Like for me, what do I care about privacy laws in the UK? Well, <laughs> if I want to run ads on my website in the UK. I need to know their privacy laws. <laughs> so for me, I think what's helped me is, and trust me, I'm not that smart. I'm just too stupid to know when to quit. <laughs> is that the key entrepreneurial trait? <laughs> so for me, it frustrates me when I don't understand something. So if I don't understand it, I'm just constantly trying to learn about it, learn about it, learn about it, learn about it, learn about it until it makes sense to me. But until it makes sense to me, I just have to learn, I just have to keep feeding more. And if you don't have that drive to just keep learning, keep learning, keep learning, especially because the landscape changes all the time. So I have to be ready to pivot in a second. Yeah, that's really good. I think if... There's a lot of uh, terrible things that happened during COVID and some of the good things that happened too was, is the, uh, is it pivot is now become an acceptable business practice. You know, is it you, you, you can't just be Coca-Cola established 150 years ago and you do things the same old way that you've done before. You, you know, it's, you, you've got to do th things new. Like you said, the landscape changes and you've got to be able to pivot when it does. And I, I'm not sure that we've ever been in a time, um, you know, in modern ages where we, <laughs> our businesses have to pivot like they have in the last three years. That's good. Yeah. What, so we got a lot of 20 somethings um, in this group that are um, maybe never even, you know, conceived of the idea you know, before, you know, Casey walked up to him at gym in the gym and said, Hey, you could turn that into a business or, you know, you could, you could do something, you know, outside of trading hours for dollars. So um, what, what, do you have any um, suggestions for them? What do they need to do to kind of cultivate the, the idea, uh, you know, or just to be able, if they never perceived of it before, I've always said to people, if you grew up in a household where, you know, the the adults around you, all they did was trade hours for dollars, it's, it's you got an extra, you know, you, you got another mountain to climb whenever it comes to entrepreneurship or business ownership. And I was super blessed in that um, both my parents owned businesses growing up. And so I just saw that in my household, my household ran a little different, you know, than um, maybe what we saw on TV, you know. So you have any thoughts about that, Tony? So I would say, well, let me answer that with a question. What is the top school that produces business owners? 
Anyone? Anyone? Nobody knows. There's no answer to that. <laughs> you know why? Because there's no school for business owners. Hmm. Everything they teach you in school is for you to be an employee. Most likely you were raised in a household where that's the way your parents brought you up to go out, get a job, work for somebody. A lot of times folks don't even realize that it's possible to start your own business. I, really all you need is whatever the fee is in your state, 100, 200 bucks, fill out the paperwork and boom, you've got your LLC. It's If I, but if you think back to the, the big difference now is that we have so much access to information. This was stuff that people used to just hoard to themselves. You know, they just tell their, it was only, you only got this information if you were in that private little club. Well, now this information is public to everyone. You just have to be willing to go out and get it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. I think that I got in a conversation today with a group of men. Um, it's a, some, I, got, I go to this, uh, it's a men's Bible study where I call it to my grumpy old men <laughs> Bible study. There's a, a particular, it, it reminds me, you remember the Muppet show and the two guys that were up in the little lofty uh, thing. <laughs> some of them are cantankerous and just like that. I let's just laugh at them, but they're always talking about, you know, how the world's going to hell in a handbasket now and everything. Like, <laughs> grumble, grumble, grumble. And, and I was saying, well, yeah, but you know what, you know, and one of them was saying, why well, can't, you know, when I grew up, you know, it was this way and people were respectful and, you know, they did this and, you know, just come kind of just complaining, you know, about everything. Um, and I said, yeah, but you know, we're never going to go back. So give up on it, you know, and we were talking about the, um, uh, the ability for people to be able to provide for themselves, you know, it's a big challenge, you know, especially in America today. Uh, working rate, wage, all those things, right? People not only work in um, one job, um, but, you know, Tracy on here, you know, I, I think she's down to two, but she, when, when I first met her, she had three jobs, you know, pop on Tracy and, and correct us on this. But, uh, you know, it's just so hard nowadays. But this uh, idea about being able to, um, uh, you know, they're just like, why can't we go back to, you know, farming? And, you know, I mean, they're like, oh, dude, that's, you know, you're 80 years old. That was <laughs> before the industrial age. What are you talking about? We can't get back there. But one of the things that's really exciting about this age is the sharing economy uh, here in Vadasta, you know, for those of you that are local, about half of us here, you might have seen some signs that are just uh, stuck in the ground by the stop signs around here saying, you know, don't like to do laundry, we'll do your laundry for you, you know, and that is actually an app that I had been wanting about a year ago. Because uh, I own an Airbnb, it would be great if somebody was in this doing participating in this app. Well, they'll do this. This I think it's called Suds. Um, do your laundry for you. And the concept is just. And there's so many out there. There's so many apps. So many sharing economies. You know, like Airbnb is one. Uber's another. You know, delivering stuff. You know, is another. And this one, you you know, just get it on your app and you put your address in and somebody comes and picks up all your dirty laundry in a, in a bag that's on your front porch. And then later that day or the next day, they put it in a fresh disposable bag, laundered, folded, and it's there and it's a dollar a pound, you know, for them to, to do that. And as a Airbnb owner, that's a great scenario, you know, to have, especially if it's widespread and I can do Airbnbs in other places, you know, that are other states, you know, hundred miles away. And I can just make that happen. That's a tremendous resource. And it's great for them too, you know, and the, just the advantages that there are today, there's more opportunities today for entrepreneurship because the person who does that is self-employed, right? They, they're just, you know, they got it like a, um, you know, they just pull up on their app and they go, oh, here's some deliveries. I'll, you know, here's some laundry to do and I'll take that one and they'll go pick it up and they'll go pick up 12 bundles, wash them, fold them, put them back, you know, and they just made, you know, more than they would make if they were working a job all day and they don't have to have the kids in daycare. They have the kids in the car with them. They have the kids in the house. You know, I mean, there's just so many advantages and that's just one there. So it, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't, there's the barriers to entry to work for yourself are coming down more and more and more every day. I would say there's a little bit delayed, but definitely at the same rate as the old idea of go to school, get a good job, work there for 30 years and retire with a pension. Who has pensions anymore? And that's exactly, that was exactly the point I was about to make. It, there's no, but the best you're going to get is a 401k and 
not every place offers those. It's, what else you gonna like? You can't survive. Secure, uh, Social security isn't enough to survive on. So we have to get into that concept now of yeah, you're gonna need these other way, these other vehicles of making money. There's just no way around it. And I think self-employment and the cool thing about self-employment, you can take it to whatever level you want because some people that's like they just have their little side hustle that their their little hobby that they love to do and you know, they might be making actually more money than they are on their regular job but they just stay with their regular job for the benefits There's, i have seen that yeah 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 you, benefits you, is a leash to me or handcuffs <laughs> you know you, it, it takes something to break away from them i understand the fear you know and and i'm blessed in that my wife's the teacher and she gets benefits you know but i'm but I'm also, I'm not very scared of leaving those, you know, when the day comes that, that, you know, we're doing something else and she no longer wants to work, you know, that way. I'm not scared of giving up those benefits. We can, we can, we have a plan for how we're going to replace those. And as I was going to say, as long as you have a plan ahead of time, mm. you don't want to just step out in that street without a plan. Now that I wouldn't recommend that, but yeah that's good so all right so you started this traveling business you've already discussed one big obstacle that came in your way which was covid um can, can you discuss maybe some uh, uh early ones maybe early on or some ones that um how, how did you overcome these obstacles to get to where you're at today well i had a couple of obstacles. so for me like i said when i thought of the site because i didn't really have like a clear reference or guide i didn't have like another website and say okay they were doing it this way i can i had a, it was a lot of trial and error that was the first part and then figuring out okay what can i do what's actually possible to do what's within my budget to do all these little different factors and then like i said when i first started it was just me trying to code the site and it, when I was doing that, uh, my life was just miserable, miserable. I'd be up all night, be up like 24 hours straight, just coding, and then the code wouldn't work, and <laughs> websites down for two days now. It's just, uh, oh, it's just horrible. So then I had to fire, then I had to start hiring developers. And then the problem with that is, Usually you find a developer and you'll give them like uh, you'll give them like a starter task just to kind of feel them out to see. And they might do that part really good. And then the next job they do really, really good. And then the next one they do really good. And then you give them that third job and yeah, no, no, it's time to. <laughs> yeah. So it's not like well, I'm just going to hire a developer. And so you have to like try these guys out. You got to like basically interview. You need to be thorough. Like if you're hiring somebody to do work for you, you need to be thorough and check their credentials, check their work. Uh, and you need to know exactly what it is that they're doing. So, yeah. but eventually after a while, it took me a while, finally found me a good developer that, I got a good relationship with. He understands where I'm going with the project. And so just getting that iteration to a fuzzy concept to something solid, there were plenty of challenges. But you, I love I love your approach too, um, and I'm a I'm a big Fiverr fan. Back especially whenever Fiverr.com, where everything actually was five dollars. I think few few of the tasks are five dollars anymore. But I, I just remember, yeah, I would hire like uh, three Fivers at the same time to do the same task because it was five dollars, you know. And then so they would all send me their stuff, and I'd pick the one that I wanted if I wanted a logo. I'm a commercial artist, you know. I have a two, I have a two year training in commercial art. I enjoy doing it. Uh, it wasn't something that I, like you mentioned earlier, you know, definitely get rid of the things that you suck, but sometimes you get rid of the stuff that it just takes you so much more time than it would cost, you know, as someone to do for $5, right. Or in this case, 15, right. <laughs> I hired three of them, 
I remember one night I had a, a guy over in, um, I think he was in Africa and I had all of my, my first website, I had my content ready all over in some, you know, documents and I sent them to him, paid him $5 at 11 o'clock at night. I went to sleep. I woke up in the morning and my website was done that he had put everything in the right slot and all that stuff. You know, I could have done that. Right. But it would have taken me a couple of days. You know, he already knew the buttons to push, you know, all that stuff to make it happen. And because of, you know, the way that the different economies work, you know, they got some cool terms for that. Now, you know, that was a lot of money, you know, to him. And, it, you know, it's very little money, you know, to me, definitely worth the time. So there's freelancers. Go ahead. And that's if you don't learn anything else as a business owner, time is money time is my yes you might be able to do it but i think about it like this how are you going to make ceo money if you spend all day doing minimum wage tasks Ooh, that's good yeah you can do it and yeah you can save some money but no just pay somebody else to do it just if you're able just, there will be stages of where you're not going to have that option but like I said, at the same time, that's good because then you know exactly what you need from the person that you hire to do that work. Yeah, that, that is good. Yeah. Let's turn the corner a little bit. And um, you on your website have talked about how significant networking, building relationships is, um, you know, so could you share some of your strategies on um, how, you know, how important that is to network with other people um, for building your business? Oh, man, I could go, what did I say? Your network is your net worth. <laughs> uh, uh, if you hang around four broke people, you're bound to be the fifth. <laughs> Not or, or that, drink a fifth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, the that's when, it, and I think that gets a loss that gets lost on a lot of business owners that the most important thing to your business is the relationships that you build. I remember uh, like on social media for a while, there was a big thing about, Oh, my circle is so small. My circle is so small. And the whole time I'm thinking, well, why are you running in one circle? You should have multiple circles, like, and you should be pulling from all of them. Uh, I've got friends, I've got circles of friends that all we talk about is stocks, 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 stocks. That's all we talk about. Stocks, small businesses, stuff like that. But then I have my other friends where like all we talk about is like sports. So, because sometimes you need that break from just hammering your head against the wall in your business. So sometimes you need that circle of friends that's going to be up. But then you need those circle of friends that are ahead of where you're at. You need those people to look up to aspire and say, oh, I can get there. Because if you don't know, it's, if you don't have those people, how do you know it's possible? Like when you're seeing the stuff on TV, like, oh, yeah, that looks nice. But until you actually... Uh, until you actually get around these people and realize like, hey, these are real people. These are not characters. They're not pixels on TV. Mm -hmm. like, I, I, like one for me was, um, I remember when I was in Korea and I was, there was uh, this cigar lounge uh, down the hill from my house. Super expensive place. But you can go in there and get a real, a nice scotch, get a good cigar, sit back, and listen to some jazz. Awesome place, but for me, it was like a once a month, twice a month type deal. You know. So I'm in there one night and I'm sitting with these guys. And I don't know how we just ended up talking. And then I came to realize like, these guys did not care about money. And that was the first time I mean, literally did, i mean did not care about money in any way shape or form so like this uh this bar it was like a it was a membership club if you had a membership you could uh 
keep your own bottles there. To have a membership, you have to spend at least a thousand dollars a month. Oh. All of these guys have bottles, and they all have multiple bottles. I mean, like crazy expensive scotches, like twenty three and twenty four year scotches, insane. And they were just, I'm just this random guy that they just met. Oh like, yeah, here, try this one. Here, try this one. I mean, they just didn't. It took being around them to realize, oh, this is what they're talking about. Like I said, you see it on TV, but until you actually see it in person. But and so, and but now that back in the day, if you weren't in that little club, you couldn't get access to those people. But now we've got the internet. Take advantage of those Facebook groups. Take advantage of going to conferences and take advantage of your local uh, uh, opportunities like uh, Chamber of Commerce and other networking events. But you have to build those business relationships if you want to be successful. It really is key. Um, <clears throat> shared with several of the attendees here that um, there, when I was considering my current partner in um, um, in, in, color, in California, uh, his name is Ryan, and we was going into business together about, I don't know, about four months ago. And I, I was like, oh, I, I don't have the caliper for that level of, of work. You know, that's kind of more of a CEO type position, you know, and um, uh, hiring and directing, you know, people that are, you know, multiple disciplinary professionals and stuff. And I'm like, I, you know, I, I, I don't, I haven't done that before, you know, I've done a counselor, right? And, uh, and and so I really you know just prayed about it and um, I, I the the next day I got an invitation to join this group of um, entrepreneurs. They were a Christian group of entrepreneurs. It was really neat down in Florida. Once a month I travel down there and to go network with them. And the first time that I was there, there is a mastermind uh, group. They let me be the person who was hot seated, which was great because I had these really pending. <laughs> questions I needed their insights on and but it was about you know probably about halfway through the day we meet for a long day we get to head down there about 10 o'clock in the morning we don't get home to about 5 30 in the afternoon we spend a good three or four hours together and um and it dawned on me that um I am the only non-millionaire in this room <laughs> this is exactly what I where I need to be for where I am where I go next right for what's what's going on now in my life but I've seen you know that it's because I'm here and I, I want to get here it's like stair steps but there's I think back and there were so many other steps that it took to get to where I am now which is not super exciting you know but it's it's it, it's good to think about it that way we can we can get real intimidated whenever we see these super successful people uh you know on tv or in on the interwebs and stuff and go you know I could never be like like that I could never grow to their level you know they're just a superior person to me not necessarily yeah. true yeah most times it's, it's, it's people are just too stupid to quit <laughs> I'm gonna have to write that down as a quote <laughs> I like it a lot uh great anybody got any uh questions for Tony I gotta to chime in remember to unmute you no I well, right now I don't really have any questions, but um, I did want to share something with Tony. Um, you had mentioned something earlier about um, what sounded like you're still trying to to dial in your messaging to be able to um, find your ideal clients. Did I understand that correctly? E Sort of, yeah. So, uh, and I, and this, well, I, I, I'll say this, this is a, a lesson I learned whenever I was thinking of the business, I was thinking more of a product. What I didn't really consider was the marketing. So the marketing, I didn't build into the product. Oh, okay. okay. So I had to go back in. I've had to go back and build the marketing into the website. And that's just I, one of those challenges. Okay. 
because um, I wanted to share something from the uh, the business uh, group that I'm in. There's something that we hear um, in there all the time, and um, basically, like to to help your clients, you have to know their like what they're thinking, what their pain points are, um, what they want and what they need. Um, and so a lot of the time it's, it's kind of phrased of how to get X without doing Y is how they phrase that. So if you can put in there, you know, somebody wants to travel, but they don't want to have to deal with this, then, Hey, this is where we come in and this is how we can help you. Um, because this is what you want. This is what we can help you with and you don't have to do it. I'm writing that down right now. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm gonna mute right quick so I y'all don't hear me clicking on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I appreciate that, Amy. We we had um uh back to the most people get that reversed, you know. So Tony's not alone in that as far as like, oh, let me back up and figure out who my ideal client avatar is. And sometimes you, you just got to be in business to discover, you know, who that is. It takes a little trial and error. Once you do, then that's where the fine tuning comes in. And I have a I have a mentor who has a very successful, very large. Um, uh, Amy knows him, uh, Matt Tommy. Um, I, oh, and so does Trudy. Yeah, Trudy read his uh, most recent book too. There he shared with me that you know he he did some crazy stuff people thought he was absolutely crazy he had a huge free group it had i think twenty eight thousand people in it at the time that he shut it down we're all like you're shutting it down why would you shut that down it's such a tremendous resource and he's like these people are just getting all their needs met there they're never going to spend a dime you know they're never going to become a member and so he changed all of his marketing because he 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 hired a company to do the marketing to discovered exactly who his ideal client avatar is. And they knew he didn't know how to do it, but he, they, he hired them to do his Facebook ads and Google ads to be able to find the, that exact person and then draw them to his website. And those people bought, and it was just a, I, I, you know, I just remember it being, it was like a cold water being thrown in my face as far as, okay, wow, that's how that works. That's amazing. So essentially what I did is I decided I wanted to open a gym. So I bought all the equipment, I bought the space, I bought all the equipment. And then I said, Hey, I want to make this a women's only gym. And now I have to throw out all the equipment and replace it with pink equipment. That's basically what I did. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> uh, well, good. Well, I don't know. Asked you earlier about you know your early failures you know and so we all have them we and and, and i just it's, it's my motto right now you know is just to fail more quickly just just you know do it right uh fail more often uh it, and just to get to the place where i can um get to that because failure is a prerequisite for success if if you guys could remember that that's been my biggest life lesson is is just go ahead and try it, you know, almost with a, you don't want an expectation, like a predetermination to fail, but you want to have like a mindset that goes, it's okay if I fail, right? Failing is just learning, right, Tony? Oh, so running a business is like, it's a contradiction. There's plenty of contradictions. So one thing I always tell people to run a business, it takes a little bit of arrogance because and I always get pushed back on that. And everybody's like, no, no, you have to have confidence. Well, no, because confidence comes from experience. When you're launching a business, most times you're not going to have that experience. So you're going to have to use arrogance. So like, a, but at the same time, you have to know how to be humble. So like, a, I used to do jujitsu, uh, done in a whole bunch of countries i never was like really consistent with it so i never really ranked up but i had friends that went on to be black belts and instructors so i've had a chance to roll with some really high level black belts i've never thought at any point 
that I would lose against one of those black belts. It never crossed my mind. I never had a chance, but I've never had that mindset that he's gonna beat me. At the same time, I'm not stupid enough to go sign up for a black belt tournament somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. That's great. Like I say, you got to have, uh, you got to have a, a little bit of arrogance, but, but you got to know when to dial it back. I like it. I like it. I've heard a very similar description. Didn't use the word arrogance, but I, I, I definitely, I like it. I see where you're coming from. Um, I can't remember the, the word that he did use to describe it. He said, you know, you got to be like absolute. This is the way to do it until you discover that you're wrong and then be very quick to change because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it'd be stupid not to <laughs> yeah that's excellent well tony one of the main reasons that i wanted you to you know be the first speaker and to talk to us about entrepreneurship and business ownership is is uh, the whole concept of aligning your passion to your business ventures and so that one i just think i, I you know out of all the people that i talked to yours definitely stood out as you know this dude loves to travel um you know and now he has a passion for helping other people to travel can can you elaborate you know on what that means for not only success in your business you know aligning your passion with your business but also how that is a more fulfilling business for you too Right. I'm trying to think how I want to say this. Uh, running a business is, like I said, it's tough. And if you don't love what you're doing, you will quit. It's just that simple. Working for somebody is easy. You have a set, they give you a set task and a set amount of time to get it accomplished. And they give you these set uh, materials to get it accomplished. You don't have any of that when you're running a business. There are so many things that will want, make you want to quit when you're running a business. So you have to find something that you love. The absolute worst reason to start a business is because you see a whole bunch of other people making money doing it. That is the absolute wrong reason. Find something that you can actually stick with because all the days ain't going to be rosy. That's good. That's good. Well, wonderful. Wonderful. All right. I'll open uh, for any kind of a Q&A now. Anybody have any questions for Tony? Casey, did you share his, uh, or Tony, have you shared your website? Because I would really like to check it out. Uh, nope, I will drop it in chat now. Thank you. We'll put it into the Facebook group too. Okay. Yeah, as well. Uh, actually, can I get that quote one more time again, Amy? <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> I got the gist of it, but I want to get it right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's how to get X without doing why. Do you mind expanding on that, um, Amy? Because that might sound like an algebraic equation to, <laughs> to some of us, but. Um, so basically it's um, like Tony, he goes and um, so he travels. If he knows, say, um, like I want to go somewhere, let's just say, um, Lake Tahoe and Tony's been there before and I'm not really sure where to go, what to do, what to see, um, what do I need instead of me having to like go and research and put a lot of time into all of this, he can say, Hey, you know, if you've always wanted to go to Lake Tahoe, then I can help get you there without you spinning your wheels, trying to find all the information that you need about where you want to go, what you want to do. That's right. So, uh, I love that yeah. without doing is the pain point. 
right? That's yes. the thing that's yeah. stopping somebody from going forward. You know, right. they're thinking, oh, I would love to do this, but I don't know. I'm intimidated by, you know, yeah. the why. And so your your little, I don't know if you call it a slogan, but it's, it's you, do you want this? You know, you can do this and I can eliminate mm-hmm. that pain point for you. Exactly. That's beautiful. Yep. You know, I said, and that's, um, and it goes back to what I said, even where I'm the speaker, I'm still learning. That's right. Learning, <laughs> but that's uh, marketing. That's one. Um, if you start a business, that I, I would say start learning that early on, because that that will be the make or break. It, it, I don't care how good your business or product is, if you can't market it well, you're going broke. And I never, like I said, when I came up with the idea I was so focused on the idea I never thought about marketing it yeah. so don't be me <laughs> we can learn from we can learn the smart way can't we from other people's mistakes or what they have learned the hard way that's really good good um what I like to do now um Trudy your mic went off for, for a second did you have a question no, I'm sorry. I had to take a call. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. All right. Very okay. good. Very good. Um, is uh, if it, one is, is if anybody else had any, I put a few nuggets over there into the chat. If you guys don't know, there's a chat button somewhere below your screen, whether you're on a phone or laptop or a uh, um, tablet or something, right? You can open up the chat where there has been some chatting taking place during our uh, uh, call here. I've put a few things that I felt were little highlights from our our takeaways, if you will, which is always important to keep in mind. Um, the next thing that I'd like to do is to do a little, um, what I call, with people that know me, um, is a, a uh, activation thought exercise where we just kind of use that as an opportunity to kind of get those cemented little deeper into um, our mind and then um, and then Tony if you got a role um, that's cool if you want to stay you can stay and then I'd love to uh, us to move into our more mastermind type of um, aspect of this Uh, and I have a question for everybody that would like to go around Robin for answering okay so the if anybody has uh, any other nuggets that you think we should include and you can um, turn off your mic or put them into the chat or both I can hang out for a little bit. I might have to step away for a second, but I can hang out for a while. Cool. Very good. Very good. Anybody can summarize any of the key insights that you've had? Haven't heard from Tracy. Tracy, any uh, takeaways from uh, what you may have gleaned from this conversation? Chris, Sadie there with you. Jacob did speak, but I'd love you to speak again. Lynn, Lisa, I know Lisa's traveling. All right. Everybody's put their phone down and walked out of the room. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do this. Uh, do this little, it's going to take about three minutes. Okay. Um, if you know me, I'm really into meditative type things and, um, really tap in our, not just our conscious mind, because consciously we could listen to Tony and we go, oh, okay, that's interesting. And then walk away and immediately dump, right? Um, maybe we had a few ideas that kind of flickered in our mind is like, well, Tony could do that. I could do this, you know, and you could think about what your passions are. If we don't do anything with that, it'll be uh, forgotten tomorrow as if you never even spent the time on the Zoom call. And so we, we want to do something a little bit deeper than that. Okay. So if y'all will participate, I would appreciate it very much. Um, we just begin with some breathing, right? So there's an appropriate meditative way to breathe, which is out of your belly. And so when you breathe in, your belly goes out. And when you breathe, um, when you exhale, your belly goes in. Okay. So just deep belly breathing, if you will, just let your... Next exhale, just to gently allow your eyes to close really effortlessly as you exhale. On your next exhale, I want you to imagine a wave of relaxation just kind of beginning at the top of your head and really slowly traveling down your body all the way down to your feet as you finish your exhale. Good. And repeat that again with your next exhale. Long, uh, brief inhales. Long exhales, about twice as long as your inhale with that feeling of wave of relaxation, if you will, go from the top of your head all the way down to your feet every time that you exhale. 
One of the amazing things about our mind is, is that while part of your mind can focus on the breath work that you're doing right now, another part of your mind can listen to what, uh, where we go next with this. Uh, you have an ability to multitask, which is really amazing. In fact, your subconscious mind multitasks all day does dozens of things all at the same time from your body regulation to the way that you're thinking and feeling to the way that you even process new information in particular. One of the things that I've learned is, is that sometimes when I get some a new information or a new idea is that I have to make room for that idea in my mind. So most of you can imagine that you've just gone through a buffet and you filled up your plate with food and you're sitting down, but someone comes up to you and says, oh, you got to try this. It's the best thing. And you're like, I have no, no room on my plate. Well, just kind of mentally take your fork and scoot over the mashed potatoes, scoot over the green beans, make a little bit of room for something new for them to put on your plate. And you can taste it. And if you don't like it, you can scrape it right off your plate. But if you don't make a little bit of room, then you'll never get something new and in a lot of ways that's growth so again as you're breathing in with long exhales relaxing from the top of your head all the way down to your toes we're just going to allow your subconscious mind to have a minute to process and utilize the information that has been gained in this session to project a better positive future for you and me I want you to allow yourself to think and even feel how you could practically integrate some of the ideas that maybe you had in listening to Tony in this discussion so that you have more control over the direction of your life and where you are even a week from now. Feeling more empowered a month from now. And having attained even more of what you want from your life a year from now. And for fun, just kind of ponder about what your life could be five years from now, and now 10 years, and now 20. Good. And as part of your mind's kind of pondering those things, let's just go over some of the key things that we've talked about today, which is one of Amy's suggestions, which was to how to get X without doing Y. It is a, a great thing for us to consider up front is how to overcome pain points. And if all that terminology is new to you, don't worry, we're going to catch you up on that. One of the biggest takeaways from today is, is that usually there's three concepts we're talking about right now is that we start with a side hustle, usually keeping your day job while you start a side hustle on the side. And then that grows into full-time self-employment. And then that can generate, can turn into a business where you are now the business owner, where you've had other people maybe doing those tasks for you, you've hired or you've automated that process. Then one last concept that I'd really like for us to get cemented in now is Tony talked about delegating tasks and not getting bogged down the minutia. And boy, I sure did that. I've done that so many times just slowed my whole progress down thinking I had to do it all or had to understand it all or had to have the, I had to be best at everything that my business, all the tasks that there were to do. And it's just not necessary. You can do what I call dad, D-A-D, delegate, automate, or delete. So many of the tasks that we think that we can do, one person cannot do all those things. And we can delegate those to others, automate those through processes like I talked about using Google Forms for my business or delete, just say, hey, I didn't even need to do that anymore. Very good. Now, as we kind of come out of this, take a deep breath in. Feel energy coming to you like you've had a really good power nap. Eyes wide open, looking at me on the screen. All right. Well, wonderful. Well, I just thank you guys for participating in that. My question for you is really not one to answer this week, but I want you to ponder on we've already introduced this concept which is basically so far our only metric on how we're doing so we're doing this program for 12 weeks this is module one and we'll end on module 12 in 12 weeks from today sometime in october and what we'll do then is well hopefully this number will have grown and the number is is your wealth number right 
that wealth number, we've already defined it. It's in the material and it was also on the Facebook great, uh, group, but I'll also uh, remind you here is if you quit working your hours, you, your trading hours for dollars job, right? If you stopped working, how many months wealthy are you? Meaning from uh, either your savings or from passive income, how, how, how long could you continue to exist at your current expenses, your current spending? if you stopped working, right? And I, I've talked to a few people in this group, but I know that, um, you know, a, a lot of us here are, our number is zero. And that, that's okay, right? That's a starting place. I think in 12 weeks, if somebody can say, I went from zero to one, <laughs> I've got a month's worth of savings or, you know, so maybe some passive income or, or something else that is now generating the uh, freedom that I have to no longer live so paycheck to paycheck and maybe even it's kind of a scary place, isn't it? Because what happens? Like, I, you know, Tony said he got fired. I got fired. It kind of jump started our entrepreneurship. It could definitely happen to, you know, everyone here. And to have that security in place where you don't feel so nervous about it, where you have the freedom to maybe take some more risks in business and uh, business is about risk. There's an there's an old expression. I'm sure that most of us have heard it before. Um, uh, he who takes the risk deserves the reward, right? Is that that takes, it takes risk. You could lose it all, but you could, if you took the risk, you deserve the reward for taking the risk. And that's where we're at today. Good. All right. So maybe next time, um, give some people some uh, ability to ponder and get some um, accountability with that. Um, you could you could share. I hate to put people on the spot like right away, and just share your wealth number, right? Maybe your wealth number is zero. Maybe your wealth number is six months. Maybe your wealth is, um, uh, you know, three years. Great, that's wonderful, right? It doesn't matter. This is this. We all just know where we need to grow from here. We'll introduce some more metrics into our program here for accountability, structure, and support provided by this community, provided by this group for um, as we grow through this process. Good. All right. Anybody got any final comments? Anything you want to turn your camera on, turn your uh, mic on and maybe say to Tony, if I just want to say thank you. Just yeah, I would say just thank like... you. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> so, go ahead, Tree. <laughs> I uh, just want to say thank you, Tony. You've just done such a great job figuring out what you love and making a business out of that. I'm just so impressed. Thank you so much for coming on here. Uh, thank you. Sorry, Amy. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> Those are uh, they're our encouragers, so they just, just couldn't help themselves. They had <laughs> pounce. <laughs> Yeah, just basically to, to echo what Trudy said, just thank you for um, for sharing your time and your journey uh, with us tonight and um, just taking time out of your your day to come and share everything with us. Like I said, I, this was, um, so when I talked to Casey, especially when she told me uh, it was in Valdosta, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's such a, a lot of good memories down there. <laughs> Some of them's kind of foggy, but a lot of good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fun in a country town. What you got, Lisa? Well, I, I was just thinking, um, I, I was dry or riding. I was not driving. I was riding most of the uh, meeting. I've just gotten to where I could uh, actually turn my camera on and you guys could see me. Uh, but I, I really enjoyed listening to everything that Tony had to say. Um, I, I too am a business owner. However, my business is like Tony's. It's not a traditional type business. So uh, my husband and I have started trying to, to venture out and, and I, I'm, I'm just starving for ideas on how to start another business. Um, how do you find that niche? How do you just jump in there and, and, and get it done? Um, anyway, I really enjoyed listening to some of your comments tonight, Tony. Thank you. Thank you. Like I would say, uh, I'll try it. If it fails, it's better to find out fast that it's not going to work than be 
four or five years down the road and like, okay, I'm not going to make any money off of this. Yeah. That's really good. You know, in the, in the coursework, I was looking at the outline before that, that I, and I wrote with an AI <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. Um, and uh, the AI is really smart. You know, it had some really good points <laughs> in there as far as like mitigating your loss mitigation. If you're unfamiliar with that word, I did loss when I worked for, here in town. I don't know, Tony, if you remember um, Bishop clean care was my first job. 30 something years ago. Um, and we did uh, uh, water damage loss mitigation, meaning that we would come in while there's still water spraying all over the house from the dishwasher or the, whatever's you know, going on and try to uh, put up fans and get things drying and spray down some you know, disinfectant. So it would, it would, it would um, do something so that the loss would be decreased. And insurance companies readily pay for that because they know that you know, if, they, if you left the water there, you know, it'd be a, you know, 10 times more you know, expense in repairing that house. And so we, the mitigation that we do in our, our life now can be, uh, or in, in whatever you, know, you might do next, as far as starting a side hustle, whatever it is, is, is just, um, you know, get some good advice and get some planning. And this is one thing that I'd love for this group to evolve into is a, a much like um, the group that I belong to down in Florida, where I just kind of submit my plans and they tear it apart and they say, you know, here, and that, they don't do it in an ugly way. They're very kind, but you know, they just say, have you considered this? You know, and I'm like, oh no, I hadn't considered that. <laughs> um, so it, we can, we can mitigate some of that loss um, potential there. One of my biggest concepts is MVP, which everybody thinks about, you know, uh, mas basketball players and stuff, but it's a minimum viable product. And um, I'll kind of share throughout this entire time, um, my little glamper that's in our backyard um, that um, um, ha more, half the group here has had a tour of it recently last week. Is that we, when I started it up, you know, I was just like, what is the, what's the least that I can pay? What's the least amount of work that I can do to get it to the point where I can now li li list it, you know, on Airbnb. Um, um, one of my Airbnb mentor, who's Rob Abasalo, um, told me, he said, pick a date. He, you know, told me in a group like this, he said, pick a date that you go live um, now. And I said, okay, the 12th of next month, you know, and he's like, okay, now you go live no matter what, right? Ready or not. And believe me, I had it ready. <laughs> <laughs> so but it was all you know just, just done with the you know it, so that if it didn't work I didn't spend two hundred dollars on towels right that I now lost right I didn't didn't go all plush and great you know just minimum viable product is, is you know will this work for this need yes it will right so that's a way of uh Indirectly, I guess one of Lisa's questions, you know, is is uh, you know how to, how to go forward with that. There's a there's a smart way to 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 do that. Good. Anybody else? Oh, I was just going to say one other thing. Uh, keep in mind that there is no one way to run any business. Like nobody does things the same. You ask. Mm -hmm. You'll see a lot of coaches like, oh, okay, this is the way you got to do things. You got to do this first, and then you got to do that second. Nope, this is all kind of play it by ear, and what works in your situation might not work in their situation. So it, it said it takes that. Got to be willing to learn constantly. Brilliant. Yep. Absolutely true. All right. One last call. Tracy, Lynn, Chris, Sadie, Jacob. All right. Tony, thank you so much, man. This has just been awesome. I mean, it's just been great. Thanks for inviting me. Man. This <laughs> thank, thanks for inviting me. Hey, thanks guys, I'm here. This. Go Hi, ahead, Jacob. Tracy, Tony. Hey, hey, I've, uh, I've been uh, trying to load a motorcycle in Jacksonville on the back of a u-haul but i've been listening i just you don't want to hear grunts and people sweating yeah that's true i don't want to hear people sweating <laughs> so i i just want to say i you know i also appreciate being invited next week i'll be able to uh you know be more uh productive in in the wordings because you know i was uh, slightly preoccupied i'm uh trying to trying to help out a friend get their motorcycle back in town 
Very good, very good. And one of the advantages is that um, this will be this is being recorded and it will be entered into the uh, coursework. So if you want to go back and review anything, um, then okay. You, whatever you, you do, do not put a question in that says what was Jacob doing on the first week. Yeah. Do not do that. <laughs> oh, I might. <laughs> I think I will. <laughs> yeah. Do not do that. <laughs> but thank you guys, and I I, I did get a good bit of listening in um but uh i think maybe uh next time i'll talk about my some of my ideas because i didn't get to bring them up this time and uh, see what people think It'd be great yeah really great right. yeah. and that's the important thing is getting get that feedback from other people and get those different different you ideas know, different ways of thinking about things you know, I, all of my feedback has been has been positive and no one's told me like, hey, your ideas are dumb. I just have a hard time starting things like I, I just have a hard time with the first step. And that's kind of always the hardest step for everyone. You know, after you're stepping, you, you learn how to run. But how do you figure the first one out? You know, well, a lot of that is a reality is anxiety and uh, me and Casey were talking about that before uh, everybody else came on. Sometimes you like you get stuck and you're just like worrying about this decision, and half the time, the agonizing you're doing over the decision is like a hundred times w way worse than the worst outcome that of that decision. So just make the decision. Well, one of my favorite sayings is you know uh, is about investing. You know. Oh, well, I can't afford investing. Well, if you can't afford investing, then you're really not going to be able to afford the bill that comes after not doing it for 40 years. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's pretty and, smart. That's pretty you know, good. investing in yourself, if you believe in yourself, is probably the smartest idea. Agreed. Agreed. Good stuff. You know, I can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, I, I never you. know when I start. Okay, I never know when my phone mutes me. I can't see my little icons. Um, I, I have the reverse problem. Um, I, my husband and I are a great balance. Can y'all hear me? I can. Okay. Um, my husband and I are a great balance um, for each other. I am more the jump in, do this. We'll figure if it, we'll figure it out later type thing. And he is more the level-headed, look, we need to figure this out before we do it. So so sometimes if you can find a partner to kind of balance you out, mm -hmm. it helps. Yeah, and that's where I was saying, like, you, that's where you need those relationships. You got to, sometimes you need to bounce an idea off of somebody yeah. before you go running 100 miles an hour off that cliff. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you don't see that sign over there? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's an excellent point lisa i know that um i had a I had a, a friend for decades and he's an idea person you know and he just come up to me like every week and go hey we, i'm going to do this and i'm going to you know and stuff and i'm you know you want to partner with me and i always say no <laughs> because i know <laughs> next week he's going to have another yes. idea <laughs> you know and so you just you know he, he, it's it's cool to be that kind of um free spirit floating you know personality and stuff but you it, it does take the balance and there's trudy's cat <laughs> um to kind of and i do think that's why opposites attract a lot you know in our marriages right so like because uh, my wife yeah. and i are the same way you know lisa and uh that helps if we if you don't have that well, even if you do, you still need larger groups like this. We need larger groups like mastermind groups, large, you know, large abilities to be. I mean, Amy and I have been in a mastermind group for three years, you know, together. And, you know, it, it, you get there's there's balance in the team. Right. You know, when you submit to a team, you get more eyes on it. You can see from more point of views, get more angles on it. And one thing I had to accept is, is that I can never on about anything i can never see the whole picture myself never yes and neither can right. you. <laughs> nobody can so that's why we need each other all right well i'm going to wrap us up then uh, everybody this has been a, been a great first real meeting all right so this is module one look forward to um, having susan here next week uh same time 
and uh, who is a uh, motivational speaker. And so she'll probably be a little less, you know, uh, interviewee or even even a little less, you know, Q&A, you know, at the end, she's, she's probably going to come packed with a um, presentation, but probably the rest of them are going to be more, more like, you know, coaching like uh, Tony's doing, but I uh, don't want you to miss her because she's really great. Um, uh, I really enjoyed talking with her. Uh, so I hope to see you guys soon. And uh, guys, at the uh, those that are listening to me, they're going to the gym. I'll see you at the gym later. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.